this week a MotorWeek Award special here on Granada Mena Motors, direct from Grosvenor House in London's Park Lane. Once again, we offer exclusive coverage of this prestigious annual event. The team of professional automotive journalists have once again been out in force. There are 17 categories in the awards, but which car will win what car, car of the year for 2000? The first category in tonight's ceremony, City Cars. And contender number one is the Deu Matis, proving that a low price doesn't have to mean low quality. It's big enough for four adults, but small enough to be nimble. Next, a car which is yet to be beaten, the cheeky fun to drive Ford car. Will it be champion for a fourth time, or has it finally met its match? And the final nomination is the Seat Orosa, bringing Volkswagen Group quality to the small car class at terrific prices, and all in a perd package. So, the three contenders for this category, the Deu Matis, the Ford car, the Seat Arosa. And of those contenders, what car's best city car for 2000 is? The Ford car. This is the fourth year in a row that the Ford car has won our City Car of the Year award. And it remains a great little package. It's good to look at, cheeky, cute styling makes it look good in town, but it's also a great car to drive. It really does feel like a mini GTI. It's good around town, nice wide quality, good steering, great gearbox, but it's also fun on the open road when it can show many big cars. Here's a fun budget package which doesn't feel like you've cut corners. Super Minis now, and this group has seen huge changes recently. The first nominee is the Fiat Punto, still oozing Italian style and as spacious as ever, but now much more refined and more sophisticated. A newcomer to the class next. It's Skoda with the fabulous Fabia, rivaling the Fiat for space, boasting big car comforts and features for an amazingly low price. And we round off this class with the Toyota Yaris, which does brilliant things in so small a package. The highlights are its inventive cabin and sparkling 1.3-litre engine. So, the three nominations for this group, the Fiat Ponto, the Skoda Fabia and the Toyota Yaris. And the winner of Watcar's Best Super Mini Award for 2000 is... the Skoda Fabia! The reason we've chosen the Skoda Fabia as our favourite Super Mini is that it encapsulates all the desirable things that have been happening to small cars in recent years. The idea that buyers are prepared to put it with a lack of refinement, lack of space, lack of safety, something that's poor to drive in a small car just doesn't work anymore. Category number three, small hatchbacks, a breed that just gets better and better. Kicking off with last year's champion, the Ford Focus, the car has it all. It's great to drive, immensely practical, superbly designed for ease of use. On to its great rival, the Vauxhall Astra, a car with arguably the best engines in the class and now a chassis that offers a great blend of enjoyment and comfort. And the third nomination, the Volkswagen Golf, bringing executive car quality to the class. The look and feel of its cabin materials and controls are matched by its refinement and comfort. So the three nominations for the small hatch class, the Ford Focus, the Vauxhall Astra and the Volkswagen Golf. Once again, it's the Ford Focus. It's a great looking car. Controversial, new edge styling, not to all taste, but most people think it looks terrific and I'm certainly one of them. And inside, it's, a, it's an ergonomic masterpiece. All the switches, all the dials are exactly where you'd want them, and it's extremely comfortable, which is why it came top of our recent comfort survey. What's more, it's terrific to drive. Super engine, great gearbox, terrific handling, lovely steering. I mean, it's terrific on the open road and amongst town. Moving up a size, we look at family cars. And first up, it's last year's winner, the Honda Accord, now available in the five-door form, favoured by UK buyers. Many things about this car says class and value. Rival number one, though, is the Skoda Octavia, with the super economical 90-horsepower turbo diesel engine. It offers top-notch quality at an unbelievable price. And lastly, the Volkswagen Passat. An affordable saloon with near limousine levels of space and comfort. And it's beautifully built, right down to the smallest detail. 
So the three nominations for the best family car of the year, the Honda Accord, the Skoda Octavia and the Volkswagen Passat. So the award for best family car of 2000 goes to the Honda Accord. The Honda Accord 1.8S five-door has won our Family Car of the Year award because no other family car is such a capable all-rounder as the Accord. It's got a great 1.8 engine, it rides well, handles well, uh, fantastic ownership costs, for example it's in Insurance Group 8 and it really is um, the best all-rounder for this category. Estates should be cars equally good at both work and play and the first of our hopefuls is the Ford Focus just as good in a state form as it is in a hatchback with more cargo volume than any other direct rival. Next, the first of two Swedish contenders, the Saab 95. With a few clever tricks hidden in the boot, it's great for leisure time and practical for business too. And then there's the stylish and smooth new Volvo V70, a veritable Pandora's box of inventive features to delight and simplify owner's lives. So, in the estate car category for 2000, the three nominations are the Ford Focus, the Saab 95 and the Volvo V70. And the winner of What Car's Best Estate Car Award for 2000 is the Volvo V70. Go back to the early 1990s and manufacturers would look to package the suspension as compactly as possible to leave themselves with the widest, flattest, most cavernous load area they could. Then the BMW Touring Series came along and recognised that not everybody needs space for a fridge freezer. Um, you know, they just use them as lifestyle cars. The Saab 95 came along last year and did it even better. And now the Volvo V70 has refined it to a fine art. Moving on to multi-purpose vehicles. And they don't come more unusual than the Fiat Multipla. But behind the oddball exterior lies a hugely capable car with a six-seat cabin that's great fun to be in. An old favourite next, the Renault Espace, with a unique and spacious dash design. This light and space-efficient large MPV is seen at its best as a turbo diesel. And finally in this category, the ingenious Vauxhall Zafira which allows up to seven people to travel in comfort, but doesn't force you to leave any of the seats behind. So, which will win the MPV of the Year Award? Will it be the Fiat Multipla, the Renault Espace, or the Vauxhall Safira? So, the award for 2000's best MPV goes to the Vauxhall Safira. The key to the Safira's success is its seven-seat ability. It's an impressive piece of kit five seats in normal use and two seats which slide away into the floor so you have a choice of carrying seven people or a huge boot. And for the sort of price that Vauxhall are asking for the Sphera, there's only one clear winner. Next, the all-important safety award. And firstly, the new Fiat Punto. As the latest round of Euro NCAP crash tests prove, the little Fiat offers excellent protection for a family on a budget. Last year's winner, Renault, has continued to impress. The ingenious Espace scored well in Euro NCAP tests, proving that people carriers can be safe. And finally in this category, Volvo, a name that's synonymous with safety, and the first company to produce a rear-facing Isofix child seat and to offer standard fixings in an executive car. So the three nominations for this category, Fiat Punto, the Renault, and Volvo's Isofix child seat. The safety award for 2000 goes to the Fiat Punto. It may be something of a surprise to you to see that a small car, a super mini, the Fiat Punto, wins the safety award. But it's a sure sign of the developments that have been made in small car design. You can now prove that safety is not the preserve of larger and therefore more expensive cars. We tested the Fiat Punto into the Euro NCAP standards and it achieved a four star rating. That is the top of the class, absolute maximum rating. Let's get some driving action in with the best hot hatch of the year. Starting with the Ford Fiesta ZTEC S. With a modest 100 brake horsepower, it's warm rather than scalding, but its bespoke chassis is as good as any old find. Moving on to the car that made this award its own, the Peugeot 306 GTI 6. It will enthrall and flatter in equal measure, with no comfort or practicality penalties. And concluding with the Renault Sport Clio, a pocket fireball packing a huge 172 brake horsepower and everything necessary to let you enjoy that power. 
So the three contenders for the hot hatch category are the Ford Fiesta ZTEC S, Peugeot 306 and the Renault Sport Clio. Best hot hatch award for 2000 goes to the Peugeot 306 GTI 6. It's had uh, a lot of competition in the last year from Renault, from Proton, from Ford even with uh, the Fiesta, but it's still won through as the best hot hatch on the market. Um, last year the rally version of it, which was a lighter version, uh, took its crown, but this year the GTI 6 is back stronger than ever and uh, even more fun than ever. Upping the pace to junior performance cars and first the Ford Mondeo ST200, available in any colour you like as long as it's racing blue. A brilliant chassis and 200 brake horsepower engine make this a fearsome competitor. But can it beat the Honda Accord Type R, whose high revving engine, slick gear shift and quick steering provide more than a hint of the racing saloon experience? And if it's motorsport thrills you want, you'll find them in the Subaru Impreza Turbo, the four-wheel drive turbocharged car that spawned a rally winner. So, the three nominations in the Junior Performance class tonight at the Watt Car Awards are the Ford Mondeo ST200, Honda Accord Type R and the Subaru Impreza 2.0-litre turbo four-door. So, this year's winner of our Junior Performance Award is the Subaru Impreza Turbo. The winner of our Junior Performance Award winner is the Subaru Impreza Turbo. Um, the reason for this is that many of us think it beats some 60 grand performance cars. It's absolutely got a fantastic four-wheel drive system, two-litre, 215 brake horsepower engine with, of course, that famous turbo. And all together, they just make an absolutely exhilarating performance car. <laughs> And now, the award for the best coupé of the year. Well, the Audi TT took the honours last year and heads the contenders this time. It's in huge demand, fantastically original, superbly made and blisteringly quick as well. Rival number one though, it's the Ford Puma, arguably the most nimble of all the coupés. Compact size helps, but it also has an agile chassis and eager 1.7 litre engine. Lastly, in this category, the new Toyota Celica. It's smaller, lighter and more driver-focused than before, as well as having sharper looks and a brighter cabin. But which will win the Coupe of the Year? Will it be the Audi TT, the Ford Puma or the Toyota Celica? So what car's best Coupe and for the second year running, it's the Audi TT! The Audi TT looks as if it's escaped from a motor show and straight onto the road, which basically it has. Um, it's got a 225 brake horsepower engine, six-speed gearbox, incredible acceleration, fantastic grip from the Quattro four-wheel drive system, and the looks are just fantastic. Uh, a mix of curves and sharp edges, it really does cut a dash down the high street and it cuts a dash down the back roads, which is what we were looking for in a perfect coupe. Moving on to the open top car category. And the Lotus Elise has had this award in its clutches for the past three years. Drive it and you won't be a bit surprised. It's the purest real-world roadster of all. Next, the car that started the roadster revival, the Mazda MX-5. Still with retro charm, but now smoother, more civilized and more practical as well. And the revised Porsche Boxster, now sporting a larger, more powerful engine but with the same fantastic driving qualities and, of course, that badge. So which will win the open top of the year? Will it be the Lotus Elise? Will it be the Mazda MX-5 or the Porsche Boxster? So this year's award for the best open top car goes once again to the Lotus Elise. In the fourth year running, the Lotus Elise has snapped up our award for open top of the year. Honda's released its S2000, Porsche uprated its Boxster with the Boxster S and Mazda released its 10th anniversary edition of the MX-5. But still, the Lotus Elise walks away with the award, which is testament to what a great car it is. It doesn't need all the gubbins like power steering, ABS, aircon. It's an absolutely fantastic driver's car and that's what matters. On this Motor Week special, let's move on to the award for the best performance car. The Aston Martin DB7 Vantage is a car in its own right rather than a range edition. Its pièce de résistance is a V12 engine. We predict Bond will be driving one for his next film.
Another car which stands alone is the BMW M5. If you wonder how a large saloon can justify a performance car tag, just try this 400 horsepower wonder. And finally in this category for performance car, last year's winner, the Porsche 911 Carrera 4 Coupe. Marrying 911 character with the needs of the 21st century, is it still the best everyday supercar? Let's find out now as Mr. Fowler opens that envelope. Is it the Aston Martin, the BMW or the Porsche? And from those contenders, the winner of Watcar's Best Performance Car Award for 2000 is the Porsche Carrera 4. It's very tempting when you're looking at this sector of the market and there are Ferraris out there and Aston Martins to really become self-indulgent. But our idea of a good performance car is that it has to be usable every day. It has to be affordable to run. It's got to be safe, it's got to be secure, you have to be able to leave it. Obviously it's got to be fast, it's got to have image, it's got to make you feel special when you drive it. And as far as we're concerned, the 911 just does this in buckets. The best off-roader category now. And from America, it's last year's winner, the Jeep Grand Cherokee. It's bursting with image, good to drive, and more practical and better made than ever before. Challenging it are two Land Rovers. First, the Freelander, combining fashionable style and superb road manners with a unique four-wheel drive system. And the other rival to the Cherokee, the Big Brother, to the Freelander, the Discovery TD5. The chunky desirability of the original remains, but every detail has been honed to create a far more complete car. So which will win the off-roader award? Will it be the Jeep? Will it be the Land Rover Freelander or the Discovery? So which is it to be? Well, what car's best off-roader of 2000 is the Jeep Grand Cherokee. More and more off-roaders seem to be about image rather than ability. But to win the what car category, it has to be able to cut it off-road and on-road. The Jeep Grand Cherokee can do both, far better than most of its rivals can do one or the other. Uh, it's, it's got a strong V8 engine, it's got a smooth automatic gearbox if you go for that. It's an all-round nice thing to have, it's very much the American brand, it's got the right badge and it's got all the right abilities. Now the best compact executive car. Alfa Romeo has not looked back since the launch of the 156. This car has all the verve, flair and excitement expected from the Italians, plus newfound depth. You ignore BMW at your peril in this class. The latest 323i with its smooth six-cylinder engine is typically great to drive and own with superb refinement. The car both have to beat it's the Rover 75. It closed up to the minute technology and wonderful refinement in a body with traditional British overtones. So the compact executive class, will it be the Alfa Romeo, the BMW or the Rover? And the award for best compact executive of 2000 goes to the Rover 75. The Rover 75 was our car of the year in 1999 and it's our best compact executive car this year, which is good news for Rover and what's been a pretty tough 12 months for them. There's been the threat of factory closures and people saying that the Rover 75 hasn't been selling very well. In fact, our figures show that it has done very well indeed. It's up against the likes of the BMW 3 Series, Alpha 156 and Audi A4, all cars with a more sporting bent. But the Rover 75 offers something slightly different. It's more genteel, more relaxed, it's very refined, it's a very enjoyable drive too, and it's built superbly well. And now the full-size article, the award for the best executive car. And first, Alfa Romeo succeeded with small executive cars. And now with 166, it's repeated the trick with something bigger. The two-liter blends style with sparkle. But can it beat the BMW 523i? four times winner of this award. It guarantees you a terrific drive, a great cabin, and a quite superb ownership deal. And the presence of the Volvo S80 shows the strides the Swedes are making in this category. Quality, comfort, and lots of kit distinguish this handsome and spacious saloon. So the three nominations for best executive car of the year, the Alfa Romeo, the BMW, and the Volvo S80. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we toyed with the idea of making this a Lifetime Achievement Award. To win a single Watt Car Award is some achievement, but the winner of our Best Executive Award in 2000 has held on to it since 1996. 
is testimony to the quality of the original design that this car remains at the head of the executive pack today and by some margin. For us, it's the car of the 1990s and it's not a bad start to the new millennium either. So it's with very great pleasure that we announce what car's best executive car for a record-breaking fifth year, the BMW 5 Series. Even more impressive is that it's had some stiff competition this year. We've had a new Alpha 166 and particularly a new Jaguar S-Type, but the BMW 523's come through stronger than ever. No other executive car can touch it for driver enjoyment and long distance abilities. Furthermore, it holds its value too, and those are reflected in leasing costs. It's one of the cheapest cars in its class to contract hire. But what of the nominations in the luxury category? We start with a BMW 735i, a V8 engine limo that despite its size and grandeur, drives with the agility you'd expect of a car with the BMW badge. On to the Jaguar XJ8 3.2. What this car lacks in roominess, it compensates for with old school British breeding allied to surprising deftness. It's sheer class. But to the car to beat, it's the Mercedes S320. This technological marvel defies logic, offering the very best of everything while avoiding the excesses of its predecessor. So the three nominations in the luxury class the BMW 7 Series, the Jaguar XJ8, and the Mercedes S-Class. The Mercedes-Benz S320. Well, quite simply, we chose the new Mercedes S-Class as our best luxury car because it is the best car in the world. Its predecessor already laid claim to that title, and this new car is better in every respect. Smaller overall, much larger inside, it's more refined, it's smoother, and simply a better owning proposition. And finally, from the 17 class champions, the winner of winners, the first car of the year of the 21st century is the Skoda Fabia. Car of the year for 2000 is the Skoda Fabia. Now under VW ownership, of course, anybody that doubted that Skoda could actually build a worthwhile competitor in the Super Mini class should go and drive the Fabia immediately. It's well built, it's refined, it's spacious, and what's more, it offers tremendous value. The car we've chosen, the 1.4 16 valve Comfort, comes with air conditioning, electric windows, and all the niceties you'd expect of a much more expensive car. Skoda, the jokes have to stop here, I'm afraid. The Fabia is the car of the year for 2000. <laughs>